Hi, this is another five number summary and box plot video. In the previous video, uh, we computed the five number summary for example two, but in this video, I'd actually like to place that five number summary uh, into the box plot so you can see how we're creating the box plot from those five numbers. Um, again, the data set we were using, uh, there were 26 trials of rolling a fair die until a two was obtained. So I've already ordered the data from minimum to maximum. This is not the order in which um, the data was collected. I've already ordered it from minimum to maximum. And if you recall, uh, the median was between positions 13 and 14. And here's position 13 and here's position 14. So if we average four and six, we got the median to be the value 5. Um, Q1 was between the 6th and 7th ordered data values. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here's 6. Here's 7. And uh, it doesn't actually matter in this case. I don't need to interpolate between 2 and 2 to figure out it's 2. So, so nicely, Q1 is just 2. And Q3 is between uh, the 20th and 21st data point. So this was the 20th and this was the 21st. Um, it was in position 10.25, so it was a quarter of the distance between 10 and 11, which is 0.25. So Q3 was the value 10.25. Now I want to show where those numbers are on the box plot. So below this box plot, if, if you read below or when we go below, it really is just an explanation of what I'm telling you now about the position of these values on the box plot. So we nicely put a title on it. This is a box plot of the number of die rolls until the first two is obtained. And over here, we're just tracking the number of rolls. So um, here's my box. And the pieces that make up this box uh, of a box plot are Q1, Q2, and Q3. Q3 is going to be uh, the upper edge of the box, and Q1 is going to be the lower edge of the box. And we place Q2, the median, as a parallel line between Q1 and Q3. Um, since we have Q3 and Q1, this part of the box, that spread, is just our inner quartile range. Um, in this case, we actually have an outlier. And I'm just going to say right now it's an outlier. It's an unusual observation. How we determine it's unusual will we'll hold off to another video. But for right now, I think you can see if you look through the data set that 29 is, is quite unusual. There is some cutoff value in here, which we'll talk about called a fence, that would say if you have a data point beyond that fence, it's unusual. And, and the outliers are denoted by an asterisk. Um, that's true in Minitab. That's true in, in most text textbooks, when you draw an outlier, you denote it with an asterisk. And um, in this case, uh, the upper, this is called my upper whisker, and this is called my lower whisker. And the upper whis wi whisker goes, um, it, it, it goes to the last data value that's within you know, this reasonable line, this fence. And the last data value then before we get to the unusual 29 is 15. So the upper whisker actually stops at the value 15. And the lower whisker goes to the last data point within the data set before, again, it be could become unreasonable. In this case, we just have a tiny lower whisker that stops at the value 1. So below this box plot is, is really just an explanation of what I just told you. Um, and so it, if it didn't make sense, you might want to reread re through this and see if, um, see if you can see how the box plot in this, in this explanation here go together. Uh, a little bit about creating a box plot, like when to do it. Um, you know, typically you want a data set with a sample size of at least 20. Uh, if you don't have at least 20 data values, the quartiles, outliers, the box plot may just be meaningless. I mean, you just don't have enough values, enough spread to make the 
box plot, you know, really show you anything about the data set. Um, if the sample size is less than 20, in, in a previous lesson, the describing data graphically, you know, we talked about dot plots, we talked about the stem and leaf plot. So there are other options if your data set is on the smaller side. Um, box plots are useful in showing the shape of a data set. Um, for example, if a data set is symmetric, uh, what you'll see is the median is roughly in the center of your box plot. And if that median is closer to Q1 or Q3, then we say the data is skewed or non-symmetric. It can be skewed positively or it can be skewed negatively. So if the median is closer to Q1, then we say uh, the shape of the data, it has positive skewness or it's right skewed. Um, on the other hand, if the median is closer to Q3, we say the data is negatively or left skewed. So I drew a few pictures. I created a couple data sets that, uh, that make sense uh, for showing these types of skewness. So here is a, a plot of female student heights and in inches. You can see the median here is pretty much in the middle of the box plot. We have about the same uh, extension of the upper whisker and lower whisker, and this data is pretty symmetric. So I think if you went out and collected a random sample, a random sample of 100 female college students' heights, it, it, this would be a very practical graph for you to obtain. Um, these are final exam points out of 200 for a class, uh, let's say, again, maybe 100 students. Uh, clearly, again, the median is in the center of that box. This, this uh, data set is fairly symmetric. Maybe the lower whisker is a little, it is extended a little further than the upper whisker, but, uh, you know, maybe we had a student here get a slightly lower score and we didn't have anybody extremely high. So there's a box plot of that example. Um, here are patient wait times. If you've ever had, you know, you go to a dentist, a doctor, and you get in and, uh, you know, maybe, again, that sorted middle data point around five minutes. I mean, if your appointment's at 10, uh, getting in by 10.05 is, is pretty typical, 10.05 or, or less. But then 50% of the data values are more than five. And every once in a while, you see this extended upper whisker. You get that appointment that, you know, you, you have to sit in the waiting room for like 25 minutes or 20 minutes. The doctor's running late. Um, somebody else's appointment runs over. Over. So um, patient wait times definitely show um, positive skewness. And if you think about it in your own life, I bet you can see where I'm coming from with this example. Um, here I, I created uh, failure times for an item. So uh, let's just say, you know, it could be failure times of a battery. Um, you know, sometimes you get those uh, batteries that are just kind of lemons, right? But um, the median for this product, let's say a battery, is 18 hours. If, you know, 50% of the data is greater than 18 hours and 50% is less, but you can see this long extended lower whisker, and we even have four outliers here that are really unreasonable data points um, beyond this, this fence that we'll be creating. But it would be unusual if you have a battery that typically has a median of 18 to only last you know, an hour or two hours, um, this isn't very typical. And what it's doing is um, it's pulling that tail uh, down and it, you know, we have these outliers. And if we were to compute actually the mean, uh, these low data values are pulling the mean toward a lower value, we have this negative skewness. So again, the median is that ordered data point, And I think it's you know, some people will say it's more true to the middle than the mean because the mean is being pulled down on average toward these lower data points. Um, so in the next video, we haven't done this yet. We've, we've looked at a box plot. We've talked about uh, what, what values are used to create the box plot. And next, we need to construct the box plot, first by hand and then in Minitab. So I hope that... Uh, 
I hope that you see the structure of the box plot and, and what it's helpful in telling you. And if you're interested, the next video will be on creating this box plot. Uh, you're probably finally like, yay, we're going to create it. So creating this box plot by hand, and then we'll, we'll see how Minitab just does a beautiful job of doing it if we have the data set. And I should mention, um, if you wanted to create these data, these four uh, plots that I have here, the data is included in the box plot lesson Minitab worksheet. Um, here's the die rolls until the first two example. Here's the height of females I used, uh, final exam point, patient wait times, and failure time. So if you wanted to check yourself later that you could get these plots, um, here's the data in the Minitab worksheet. So I'll stop it here, and I'll look forward to uh, talking to you again about constructing a box plot. So until then, uh, I'll see you, and uh, we'll talk soon.